My name is Miriam Joy. Most of you know my husband and I, Bud. And we would like to thank you today for joining us. This is going to be a training video that we're throwing together for you, so bear with us. But the most important thing is we want to teach you a technique. And we hope to have these available for you at no charge and more to come in the future. So thank you for joining us today. The first thing that we're going to talk about or the thing that we're covering today is quick wood. So many of you ask me how to use the quick wood. So I want to do a little kind of learning lesson or class on it for you. Um, quick wood is a great product. When I first started doing trees I knew I wanted to add more dimension to my trees so I was looking for a clay or something that I could use and as you know all artists have one thing that they really like and this is the one that I really like. The really nice thing about Quickwood and it can or can work against you is you have 20 to 25 minutes workable time with Quickwood. It dries rock hard in an hour so it's rock hard. So I like to use it because I can keep going forward with my projects and I can teach it in class and it's done and you can still go home with a finished gourd that day. So that's why it's really important for me. Uh, when you first get your quick wood, if you'd please open it up and there are instructions in here. And please read through them, their safety instructions. Please be aware of some of the chemicals and stuff that is in the quick wood. So I encourage you to please follow all of their um, instructions before you work with it and start to use how I use it. Uh, the most important thing when you're getting ready to do your quick wood is to remove your jewelry. Quick wood is rock hard, and so it's rock hard in your jewelry in an hour. So it's real important to remove all of your jewelry so that nothing gets left into the quick wood. When I use the quick wood, I open a lid, I slide it out, and we talk about quick wood. And what quick wood actually is, is it actually is a wood putty epoxy. So being wood putty, it's used for home repairs, anything to fix furniture or shelves or anything that's wood. So anything that you can do with wood, you can do with quick wood. So that's why they call it the name quick wood. You can sand it, you can drill it, you can do all of those kind of things with it. So it's really great that you can use it that way as well. I like to use it just like a clay. And we talked about it being epoxy. Epoxy has two parts. Well, there are your two parts. They're already pre-mixed right into the epoxy tube. So you've already gotten them. And when you done or cut a piece off make sure you put that little piece over. When I first open it up the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vegetable spray and you can also use a little bit of water if you prefer but I'm just going to spray my hands so that the epoxy or the quick wood doesn't stick to them so I'm just going to put a quick one like that and you can either wipe your scissors or spray just a little bit on your scissors. I prefer scissors to cut it with and we're simply going to cut just the portion that you're working with. So whatever little piece you only want to do that a little bit at a time so that you don't have a bunch out and the others start to dry. Now we're going to make sure it has this plastic wrapping on it. We always want to make sure that we move all of that because I don't know how many times I've started to work with it and realize after I've rolled it out or worked with it that there's still a little piece of plastic in there and it kind of gets into my design and I have to remove it and start over. Now you can see how we have the white and the brownish color and how we activate those two pieces of epoxy together is simply by kneading it and that is how we start getting that ready to work and I'm just kneading it you can see how it's marbleized and we're just going to keep kneading it until it's all one color and they say that it also is kind of warm to the touch after it's mixed really really well 
So we're going to knead that. You can see it works just kind of like clay. And you don't want to spray too much vegetable oil on your hands, just enough so that it's not sticking to you. So we've got that nice and ready to go. One other thing I wanted to mention is if you had your wood, quick wood, sitting for a while and you removed the little thing and it was a little tad crusty on the end, just simply remove that tiny bit right there and then just keep on working with that. The manufacturers tell us that quick wood has a shelf life of two years. I think I actually had one person tell me they'd had theirs for 15 and were still able to use it so that you can keep it around for a while and not having to worry about using it all up at one time. So that is the basics on how we start to use the quick wood. Remember how I said I wanted to make the trees when I first started thinking about using clay. I wanted to get the dimension in the trees. So we're going to kind of talk about how we use that clay to do that. So we're going to set that over there and I'm going to bring in one that I've already added a couple of limbs on and I'm going to take my quick wood and I'm going to roll it and I'm going to roll it from a fat end to a little end and the great thing that I forgot to mention about Quickwood is you don't have to glue it on. You just simply set it onto your piece and you start to push it. Now see how I've got that real fat part down by the bottom of the tree and I've got this thinner. Now remember, branches are not even. I'm going to get a little bit of vegetable oil on my fingers here because you have your fingerprints on the branch or the clay so we want to smooth that out and by doing that we're also putting that in. I have that little tip break off. I'm just going to put that little guy back on and just continue on working. Now to make the um, holes I forgot an item so I'm going to reach down and grab it. That's the great thing about home videos. I can do whatever I want in them. And we're going to, this is a Miriam Joy wax design tool, and to put that hollow into that tree, we're simply just going to go like that. Isn't that nice and fun and easy? I am going to use one of my wax tools. You can also use your hobby knife, and I do have these available, and I'll show you what the pack looks like. But we're going to make our lines in our tree. Remember, trees are not perfect. So you don't want your lines and everything to be perfect. In fact, the kind of more uneven they are, the more they look like nature if you walk outside and look at it. But see how that really starts to come to life there. And then if you'll notice, I just rolled smaller twigs and started adding them onto the end of the bigger trees wherever I wanted those. I would mix up another batch of quick wood and just keep on working, but like I said before, only work with the little bit that you're working with and you'd rather be able to add more and keep on going. So we've talked about the tree, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the leaves and how we get that kind of look. When I first started doing um, this leaf pot, I went and started to do again excuse me one second like I said this is the great thing about home videos I can reach over and grab it I went to the computer and I googled uh, oak leaves now this is just wax paper that I'm using and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray just a small amount on my hands. You don't really want to spray it directly onto your paper because you want the clay to still stick to your gourd, but you don't want it to stick to your wax paper. So we're just kind of lightly coating that. So once I went to the uh, computer and saw what kind of shape the leaves were, I came in and I'm going to make it a little bit up and down and I'm going to fold my wax paper and I'm going to roll it. This is just a little dowel wool roller and we do have those available if you don't have access to one. 
and I am just simply rolling that out. It doesn't matter which side it sticks to, I just have that roll. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut it out. And again, if you do not want to do this with uh, your tools, you can also do this with a hobby knife as well and it'll give you that nice clean edge. And remember, each leaf is different. Each one has a different shape and a different look and a different color. Nature is always different. So I have made the shape of my leaf that I want. I'm going to have this being the top. And when you do that, you just simply set it where you want it on the board. And the reason we put it on the wax paper is so that you don't lose the shape of the gourd, or excuse me, of the leaf or whatever you've done. When you try to pick it up and move it, you just simply rub it onto your gourd and it just stays just like that. Now we've got some little rough edges. We're just gonna come up in here. Now what I like is because I've got different tools, I use a wax design tool and I come in and I give it some depth here and we can put in some lines and of course as you're working at home we've got a little probably a little dog here it's one of the great things about working out of our studio that makes it more homey right and wherever you want those. And the really neat thing I like about this is pushing these leaves up on the side and you can really add nice dimension to that. And you can also, instead of pull it, kind of roll it down as well. Now to do my lines, you can either cut it in with your wax design tool. One of my favorite things to use is a laminated business card. We won't tell the owner of this card that we're using it, she'll never know and because you can just push it the whole way and so I'm just coming back into those lines that I did earlier and I'm just pushing those in you can add more lines if you want to whatever you want to do so there's another really neat thing that you can do with a leaf if you wanted to make the leaf stick out you would let the quick wood dry a little bit longer and you would kind of let it stick however you wanted it to hold out and then it would hold that form as it starts to get harder on you. So that's a really neat thing that you can do with the quick wood as well. I'm also going to show you how we do the packages on the Christmas tree with the quick wood as well. When you have the little piece left over from the last batch that we used, cut a new piece and just work it into your quick wood. That way you don't waste any and it actually makes it a little bit more pliable so you can keep on going. You can also use a little bit of paint extender for like acrylic paints that will let it last a little bit longer. The great thing is if you put that leaf on or did something you didn't like it, you just peel it off and you start again. So now I'm simply going to roll it back into a ball and we're going to decide what kind of shape present we want, whether we want it tall and slender, fat and short, however we want it to go. We're going to put it back into our wax paper again. And we're going to roll it again with our little dowel roller. And got kind of a square shape going here. Now, you, this is not my business card. This happens to be like a credit card. This is actually a hotel key. And no, I'm not advertising for Pizza Hut that I use because it's thick enough that I can take and push my present on the sides to get it into the form that I want it to go. This is kind of being ornery on me here. I'll hold it down with my hand a little bit. But you just keep working it back and forth until you get that square look that you want. And we would come in here and rub it a little. So I've got that more square. So I'm going to bring that over to the tr 
gourd we were working with and said we just wanted to place this under the tree we would just put our package under the tree like we talked about rub that off it goes right onto your gourd and then I come in again with my business card and I'm going to put some ribbons on it and I just simply walk it from one end down to the other and then we're going to walk it across again and I'll turn that around and show you in a minute I know I can't do that Let's see how that just puts the ribbons on there I would just roll some other little ribbons and put them up on top but how that adds such dimension to that I'm going to show you one other thing real quick here is how to use cookie cutters also as well and you can add the cookie cutters to anything I happen to use the cookie cutter to add the star on top of the tree so just by using that cookie cutter I don't have to worry about getting that shape exactly perfect so that's another reason that I use the cookie cutters and cookie cutters come in all kinds of fun shapes and everything so there's all kinds of little ones but don't forget the big ones you can use the big ones just as well I have a large snowflake that I want to put onto a gourd and then put wax uh, snowflakes around it so we're simply going to roll this one more time and you want this big enough that your cookie cutter can fit into it so I roll that out we're going to open that up and I'm going to spray my cookie cutter so that it doesn't stick to my cookie cutter and I'm simply going to place it into there and you're going to remove all of the excess clay around it and see how you have that nice neat star and usually it sticks right there so we would do the same thing you would put it where you want it we're going to pretend that we want to put this up on the top of our tree try and get it where you can see it a little bit here I'm going to put it on the end of this branch just so that you can play with it or kind of know how we get it there and there it is and that tree that is really went on really well I don't really have to move it or just if you did use your little cards that we were talking about or some of your your uh, wax excuse me clay tools one of the fun things with the clay tools is they have some this one has kind of a cut line I guess you would call it so if you come in here and add that to the star you can see I'm just working it down and then I would come in and let's add some more lines in here let's add one in between each one of those see how fun that is you can actually take beads and put your beads and just sink it into your clay as well and you don't have to glue them on or anything and remember this is going to be rock hard in an hour so get your work done and you know don't mess around and that is how we do that part of it the next thing we're going to talk about is how to use rubber molds with the quick wood this opens a whole different fun thing to do. I happen to purchase these from Blue Well, which is a gourd supplier, so if you ever happen to need any of those, you might look them up. I also picked up um, some cake decorating molds, and this one is from Wilton, which I can't wait to try onto a gourd. It's got flowers and birds and trees. The cake ones are nice because they're kind of... Um, shallow and they're not as deep so I really like the shallow ones better but when you're looking for rubber molds look for them in all kinds of different areas you'd really be surprised in the jewelry section they happen to be sometimes they are in the clay section and then like I said before some of them are in the cake decorating supply section the one thing that I really didn't like was the plastic molds they you can't kind of bend them to get your clay out and they were a lot harder to work with at least for me so I don't like working with those 
those as well. Your clay, or your, excuse me, your rubber molds also come in little tiny things like this. I happen to pick these up from the cake decorating supply warehouse and so they had all kinds of nice little shapes as well. So we're going to do a face and what I'm actually working on is a Santa face for a gourd. So we're going to use the rubber mold to start his face. Okay, what we're going to do is we're first going to take our little mold. Like I said, this was one that I purchased from Blue Well, and it's got hands and feet and ears. And I guess these are elf ears. I can't decide what else they are. So I'm going to use the smaller face. And of course, again, I sprayed it with my vegetable spray. And I've already had my uh, quick wood ready to go. So I'm gently going to push it into the mold. You want to have enough quick wood that it happens to fill up the entire mold, but you don't want so much that it's working out. I actually could put a little bit more into this. And as you see, I'm picking up that Pam on the back because, or the vegetable spray, because you do not want it to not stick to your gourd. So it's real important to remember that we don't want that to stick. So we're kind of removing that a little bit because it was too much there. And then we're gonna simply take it to our gourd and we're going to push it on. See how that just went right on just like that. And then I would just kind of just do the face just a little bit. And all I did on mine was I added more clay in this area starting from the chin on down to make the beard. And then I put a little rim around to turn this into the hat. And that is simply how you use the molds. They are so much fun. Another thing we're going to do, and I'm going to show you a really neat thing that I just discovered, and we're going to be using a mold, but I, you usually use your mold and then you have the pain of trying to color it after you've put it onto your gourd. And on the tree gourd, I forgot to mention that I usually just paint the quick wood with acrylic brown paint and then I highlight it with yellow and white. So that's how I usually add the colors to that. But I was playing with something the other day. So I went to the store today and I purchased some uh, Wilton colors. And I tried doing this with plastic gloves and it does not work. The gloves want to stick to your clay. And what I'm doing is I'm using a toothpick and I'm just putting the color into this. If you're going to be using it, I would keep this just for your craft purposes only. If you were going to be using it for food and everything, make sure that you don't dip back into it each time you get a new toothpick. But anyway, my hands are going to start to get kind of messy here, and we'll see if we want to add more color or not. And if you notice, I'm using the paste. I am not using the liquid. The liquid is going to change the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here, um, The your clay. It's going to make it not want to set up as fast and it's going to make it wiggle a lot more. So we don't want to use that. We want to use just the paste. And I went back, you saw I added a little bit more color to this. And I happened to get a little tree mold. And I'm going to roll this kind of up into a ball so that you don't get those lines. Let's set that color off to the side. And there's my little tree mold. And I'm going to spray him with that Pam just a little. And we're going to push our colored clay in here. And you can see by that I've got just a little bit too much. So I'm going to take some of that out. And we're simply going to work it in some more. And I want to remove just a little bit more of that clay. If you put too much in it, you get the it comes around the sides, and so it's a, then you have to cut it off after you've got it onto your gourd, and we don't want to have to do that. So we've got that there. So now we're simply going to take him to our gourd. We're going to line him up. 
wouldn't it be fun to do a Christmas scene or a snow scene with a whole bunch of little Christmas trees all lined up? And I'm not getting a good push here. I'm trying to show you instead. So we're going to push this just a little bit harder. And we're going to bring that Christmas tree down a little bit. And that didn't turn out real well. So guess what? We get redos with clay. That's what's really awesome about this. If you don't like it, you do it till you like it. So that's really one of the fun things. And if you ever have met me, my hands are always full of color. I guess that's a sign of a good artist. Is we're always playing with color and new things. And my hands are always different fun colors. So Now they're green today. And they're not green very often. Usually they're red or yellow, brown. So let's try this again. See if we can get this to come onto our board here. I don't know why this guy's giving me a little bit tougher time today. He popped right out for me the other day when I was doing it. This is a deeper, a deeper mold. Remember how I said the shallower ones are easier to work with? So you've got a little bit of a deeper mold. But there you go. You've got your tree on. So that's really fun thing to do and you can make any color you want to. The next thing I'm going to show you is if you were doing a leaf and we've already made it this color with the poinsettia. We've already done the different uh, colors with our food coloring so that you know that you know how we colored that. We just did that with the food coloring. And this was a pink. This was not a red. This was a pink. The red color is a little bit different. You can see that it's a little bit more red. I did put some different colors on top. And I'm going to show you how we get these wonderful colors. These leaves are so easy to make and I love doing these. We're simply going to roll it out first. I'm going to take my finger there's that red color and I show you I'm always into and I just push my thumb into it you don't want to do it too thin on the bottom and then I just kind of stretched it out a little bit so that we could put it next to our poinsettia flower and we're gently just gonna set it in there now we're gonna kind of remove our fingerprints and you can use a vegetable oil. You can also use just a little bit of water as well. That works really well too, but you don't want your, your um, fingerprints on that. I'm going to use my wax tools, my clay tools. I always call them wax tools. You know why I'm used to that. I'm going to press that down a little bit. And we're going to come in here and we're just going to put the leaf veins in. If you don't like the shape of it, if this side's too down for you, roll it out and do it again. But this is where the fun part comes in. I am going to take my shimmer powder and I'm going to open them up. And when you're working with shimmer powder, work out of your lid. I'm going to use my gold and my green here. And use a mop brush. It's a brush that's not too... Um, it is not too pointy. It doesn't come to a point. It kind of fans out more. So that's what I like to use. Now when we do this, I dip my color, my brush into the color, and then pounce it off on the lid so that you're working out of the lid from now on that the color doesn't get wasted because if you came over here and did it straight, you're going to have a bunch of powder just kind of go everywhere. So we're going to come in here and look at that shimmer. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool. And paint your gourd before that. On this one here, I painted it with gold, just acrylic paint. This is a coyote gourd, which we have available if you don't have those at your disposal. And then I just put that clay on top. And look how easy that is. We didn't have to paint that at all. We're just coming in here and adding the highlights to it. And I just love this. I think this is so awesome. I'm coming in now and I'm adding just gold highlights on it. And I'm putting it on the outside of the leaf, kind of where it would pick up some sunlight and just a little bit in the middle. And you can play with that. You can add more, whatever you want to do. But look at the 
great shine you're just already starting to get onto that leaf the only thing if you are working with this is you might get a little bit of your thumbprint when I'm working with the gold acrylic paint I just base coat back over the top of that but some people just like that real muted color that's even left by your handprint so whatever you decide that is really fun to do I am going to show you one more product and this product I really, really like, and this happens to be the Quick Copper. The Quick Copper actually contains particles of real copper in it, and it is just a really neat product to work with. I'm going to show you, if I can grab it here without the whole house falling down, how neat this looks. I think this is such a neat, antique looking clay. I love working with this. I keep saying that I want to make these for heirloom ornaments to pass down to the family from generation to generation. I just think those are awesome. And I plan to be showing a class on this online um, free of charge to everybody so that you can learn how to make these and that will be one of my next classes that I will be working with you on. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a piece of our quick copper and remember, try and get all that plastic off there so that you don't have any in there. This happens to be my last in piece here, so I'm trying to get this off as nice as possible without making a mess. I want to make sure I have enough of the two parts. And that it works just like the quick wood. It's already got the two parts in it, so it is really easy just to mix it. And this one, you can really tell the difference between the two when you're mixing it. So we're just going to go back and forth. And as you mix it, it starts to get easier to knead. And we're going back and forth and back and forth on this. So we're going to knead it till it becomes all one color. I think the quick copper has a tendency to dry a little bit faster than the quick wood. I think on the instructions it tells you that's about 15 minutes working time on that. So remember that as well when you're working with it. So we're going to do kind of the same thing we did with our other piece here. And I am going to take that and push my finger in there. We're going to make this a flower petal. On that other one, I used a purple or a blue shimmer powder. On this one, I think we'll kind of come back in and add some. Let's put it on this side so we don't have to look at our other colors and get a little bit confused with them. When I'm doing the leaves, I pull the leaves a little bit further down than I do the petals. And we want to smooth that out, get your fingerprints out of there. Now one of the really fun tools I talked to you about was this one that kind of looks like a, a cutting tool. Uh, if you were tearing something out and they had kind of pre-cut for you to be able to tear it out. But look how fun that makes the flower. I think that's really kind of a neat thing to make the petals as well. So we're going to simply take our little mop brush here again. I'm going to open up a pink shimmer. Remember I talked about putting it into the lid, pouncing it off in the lid, not in the thing. That saves a lot on your color, so it goes a long ways, and that lasts a long time. See how that just adds the color to it? Look how fun that is. And because you're using the quick copper, you don't have to add any type of color to it, base color, which I really, really love. I'm coming in and I'm highlighting it again with just the gold. And I'm going to put it in the middle right there. And look at the antique look that gives it. I think that's just really neat. Do it with roses, but that'd be awesome with roses. Do an antique rose. So there's all kinds of fun things you can do with the Quick Copper as well. I just really think it's a great accent product to uh, use as well. So we're going to wrap this little part up and then we're going to come in and we're going to talk about everything that we use today and go over it just a little bit more. We're going to review some of the products we used a little bit, just for your knowledge. 
We started with the quick wood, which are, is the wood putty, but I also refer to it as the clay because I use it as a clay kind of when I'm showing you the class. If you also wanted to do a bigger project, you can also roll up foil and put it in the middle and put your quick wood around the edge of it and that way you don't have to use all of the quick wood on that. So that's another little tip as well. Then we're going to go to the quick copper and this was the one that we showed how fun and antique looking this was and you didn't have to add any color to it. It's just a wonderful product to use as well. I really, really like this. I'm excited about that. We also used the clay tools. This is the small seven piece series that has seven different tools in it. And I use this a lot in my um, demonstration today. And all of these products that I've shown you so far are available on my website at miriamjoy.com. So we want to let you know that they are there. I also have a larger size of clay tools as well. And we don't have these listed, but if you were interested in them, please let us know. We'd be happy to help you with that item. I also use my wax design tool. This was the number two tool. You could also use a larger number three as well. And then we also used a wood dowel. And I know that sounds simple, but sometimes it's easy. If you wanted one, we've got one if you needed it. All right, some of the other items that we use today and I'm going to talk about is when I am done with my clay items, I like to varnish them. And in this case, it's a glaze. It is not a varnish. So I use Triple Thick by Krylon. And you simply just shake that and spray that right onto your um, project that you're doing of two or three times. And I also use this over my wax as well. So I really am really liking this a lot. The next thing that we used was the vegetable spray. And I used that on my hands so that I did not stick to the quick wood. And I also sprayed it onto my hands and used it onto the wax paper. So we used wax paper as well on a base. I know some people, when they're working with quick wood, use a little piece of glass so that they had, can um, just work on it without the clay sticking to anything. So you can do that as well if you wanted to. We also used the different rubber molds. Like I talked about, some of these I purchased from Blue Well. Some of these were cake decorating supplies. And some of these I found in jewelry sections or different items in the stores. There's also some little individual ones that you can find in cake specialty shops that were fun as well. We used different cookie cutters to make fun shapes to add to our gourd. And you can use little tiny flowers or all kinds of little things just to punch out and put on your ornaments at Christmas time. We'll use the star today. And don't forget to spray those with your vegetable oil before you put them on or put them into your clay so they don't stick to your clay as well. We did color our quick wood and we colored that. We took them out with a toothpick and colored our quick wood, making it different colors. This one I picked up from the store and it's got 12 different colors. It's actually got a flesh color, it looks like to me, and they're calling it a copper, but I think that would make a really good color for like our Santa's face or different things like that, so that you don't have to come back and base coat them or color them in with your acrylic paints. It saves that whole step. And to me, that was always kind of a hassle because you're trying to paint around everything. So I really think finding that out is huge. And remember, you want the paint that, or excuse me, the food coloring that is um, a paste or a gel, not the liquid, because it changes your consistency. Con <laughs> 
consistency. This is the great thing about home videos. You get to listen to me stutter. Consistency of your quick wood and it makes it too thin and you don't doesn't work right. So make sure that that is a paste or a gel. We also use the shimmer colors which just may added those great highlights to the quick wood after we had colored it or in the quick copper to just set that off. So I really like using those as well and I used a mop brush to put those colors on with. I also used with my clay tools a credit card shaped one and if Pizza Hut would like to send me a pizza I would appreciate that for free advertising and then I for my little lines because this is thicker and I like the thinner the laminated card and uh, we'll see if this person will send us something too while we're at it to make my lines because it's a longer workable area and I can just roll it. So those are the products that we worked with and stay tuned we're going to give you a little quick demonstration of all the fun things that we have come up with with Quickwood. Thank you for taking time to watch this training video today. Please look for future training videos that will be coming. We plan to do one with the nice little quick copper flower in the future. And also there will be online classes and I hope to start with the Christmas tree. So please look forward to that. All of my products can be found on my website at miriamjoy.com, so please look for them there. And one of the tips that's really great with Quickwood that I forgot to mention doing this little video is use your Quickwood to fill in holes in your gourds. If you have a gourd that's kind of imperfect because it's got this hole into it and you don't know what to do with it, just take the Quickwood, just stick it in there and smooth it out. And if you don't get it as smooth as you want come in back with some sanding paper and it'll just blend in with your gourd so you can save that gourd so that's another really great thing about quick wood and for other tips please visit my Facebook page at Miriam Joy Gourd Creations I'm putting up all kinds of projects as I work on them daily so there's all kinds of new things and there'll be a lot more projects done with quick wood so look forward to that and thank you again for taking time and sharing with me today and have a great day and I'm gonna let you spend a few minutes looking at just a few of the projects that I did with Quickwood so that you can kind of have an idea and I will let Bud film that and I'm going to walk off here into the sunset in our wonderful Arizona so have a great day